and welcome. Amen. Amen. Dr. Kwame has stated this morning. Um, first, I thank God for being here. I thank him for allowing me to even to be able to come before you, not because we're not in the same place in terms of the building, um, but we are in the same place in the spirit and so and on this platform. So I want to give God praise. So right now we're going to do our um, communion because once we um, every morning when we come together, we are we are communing with the Father through Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. And so with that, we bring our communion element and we take communion. It opens up our eyes, it opens our wisdom and understanding, and it draws closer to him and let him know that we're thinking about him even uh, throughout our day and as we go forth. Amen. So Amen. if you have your element, I would like you to just lift it up right where you are. Glory to God. And we go, come in from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 22, 23, and 24. Glory to God. And before Jesus break the bread, he, he give thanks. So let us give thanks for the broken body of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this morning, we just thank you and praise you that we have another opportunity to fellowship with you, to have communion with you in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we just lift up our element, whatever it may be, but we ask you to sanctify, purify, transform it to become the broken body of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, we thank you that all the stripes that he took was for us. And by his stripes, we are healed. We thank you that his body was broken for us that we too might be engrafted in, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, every sin that was placed upon him that we deserve, but yet he received it, one who has done nothing wrong, never sinned. Glory to God. So we are so grateful for, for what Jesus had done, for how he took upon himself everything that we deserve. So Father, we just thank you for allowing your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to be our appropriation in the name of Jesus Christ that he, oh glory to God, intercede and took everything from for us upon himself. So this we are grateful this morning. We thank you for it and we bless you. You said as often as we do it, we do this in remem remembrance of him in Jesus name. Break yeah. me. Yeah. Amen. like manner as we lift up our cup before the Lord. Father, we lift this cup that represent the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. And we ask you, Lord, to sanctify, purify, remove every unpure thing in Jesus name. And so, Lord, as we lift our cup before you that represent the blood of Jesus Christ, we are so thankful and so grateful this morning for what Jesus has done. He never said a mumbling word. He allowed himself to be brought to the cross. He allowed himself to be nailed to the cross because his love for you was greater than anything. And his love for us was as great as well. And so, Lord God, I just give you praise this morning for Jesus Christ being his blood being shed for us. That same blood that was shed speaks even now on the mercy seat. That same blood cry out from the ground in the name of Jesus. That same blood make a perfect atonement for us that we can be grafted in, that we can be called the children of the most high God. Thank you, Lord, for that blood. That blood gave us life because the life is in the blood. And so for that, we are grateful this morning. We're so thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you that the blood is a weapon against the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. And you said as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of you until you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink. Amen. Glory to God. And so, Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor for the broken body and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Well, this is a new Sunday. Glory to God. A new day that um, the Lord has given me another opportunity, as well as Dr. Kwame and Dr. Mildred has asked me to uh, bring the word today. Last week, we spoke on um, faithfulness, the faithfulness of God. This week, we're going to be speaking on the faithfulness of man. 
And so whenever the word comes forth, it's never to point finger because Jesus Christ is the ultimate uh, standard. He is the standard. So he always points to himself. But he loved us so much that he would not leave us ignorant in our devices and the devices of the enemy. So whatever the enemy plans are, God wants to diffuse that. He wants to annihilate it and make it null and void for our lives because his plan for us is good and not of evil. Amen. So this morning, yesterday, I was so, so tired for the past couple of days. My nephew is here from New York and I'm trying to switch his driver's license. And once the, um, when I thought I had it done, then something else pop up on him. And I was just spending a lot of time out there. So I was really tired. I pulled up in my driveway and I fell asleep in my car. I was so tired. So, you know, I already had meditated on the word that the Lord had dropped in my spirit, but I never really went in into the studying that I would do. So I just said, you know what? When I woke up last night, it was like eight something. I said, Lord, you said at that very hour when I opened my mouth, you will speak through me. So I'm just going to surrender myself to you as I always have. And I'm not even concerned because you're going to give me just what we need at that time. And then this morning, the Lord woke me up and he just began to speak. I, you know, and I, I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. And, and it's like, I didn't hear him say, get up now. But it's like he's saying, I need you to move. So I got up, I got my book and I start writing and I just love it because when God give us a word, it is because there's a need. It is because he's trying to get us to a new place in him. It is because there are doors that still open in our lives that we are not even aware of at times. And it's because of his love is, is unfailing, undeniable love for us that he gives us what he gives us. So by no means should anybody feel any kind of way more than, Lord, I thank you. Why? Because this is an opportunity for us to repent. This is an opportunity for us to begin to search ourselves and to see what is in me or what it is that I'm dealing with that resemble the word and then repent and keep it moving. No need to sit and meditate on it because God is revealing to us. And then once we receive it, we deal with it keep it moving. Why? There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If we remain in the place of flesh, then the enemy is going to come. And then he's going to bring a condemnation upon us that would cause us now to start looking at ourselves as the standard instead of looking on, onto God. Amen. So last week we talked about uh, faithfulness. Faithfulness is um, lasting loyalty, trustworthiness in a relationship, whether it's relationship with God or with man. It's, it's a fact or quality of being true to one's word or commitment, being dedicated and steadfast in performing one's duty, fidelity, and trust. It also means truth. God faithfulness is in both who he is and what he does. Our faithfulness is, is who we are in him, but also what we do. Amen. So we talked about the word faithfulness. It means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That's faith. The, per, the word full means tend to or able to. And the part that's ness, it means from the headland, meaning that whether it's birth in heaven or it's birth under the earth, it's coming from somewhere. Faithfulness is us being committed to something, someone, or something else. So today, as we, we, we're going to look at uh, faithfulness of man, and it begins with Jeremiah. 17 and 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. And before we read that, uh, man's faithfulness can be um, 
anything towards something good and it can be towards evil. Faithfulness does not always mean, you know, a lot of times when we think of faithfulness, you just think of somebody being your friend or you doing something for somebody or you come to church faithfully. But faithful can be as evil as it can be good. Amen. When we think of faithfulness or being faithful, we never think of it the terms of bad or good. Well, today we'll look at it in a few examples from the word faithfulness brings reward. When we're faithful, whether we're faithful to God or we're faithful to another entity, there is always a reward. The reward can be great and it can be devastating, it can be good or it can be evil. Jeremiah 20, 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, 9 through 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the ruins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So know that whatever seed that we plant, there is going to be a tree there is going to be a re the reaping from that seed. So faithfulness, it's different, it's coming to you differently from what we have heard or what we know. And I'm giving it to you as the Lord gave it to me this morning. We already know that God is faithful and his faithfulness is unsearchable. That's Romans 11, 33. It says, hold the depth of the depth of the rises, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable is your judgment and his ways past finding out. So God's ways is way above anything that we can even ask, think, or even fathom. When we think we got it all together, God shows us something else. And, and he was like, wow. I mean, I know I'm always wowing over God's word, no matter how much I think I know. I can never out know God's word. And I could read one scripture today, pick up the same scripture next month. And it would be something else God revealed about that scripture. So the only time you will always, you will know more that, than you think that you know more than God or you think you have exhausted the word is when you leave this world. You will not be here in that term. Amen. So Jeremiah chapter 9, chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. We already spoken that. Remember, God's ways are not our ways and, and our ways is not his ways. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, and it reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your, your ways. And my thoughts are my thoughts higher than your thoughts, or my thoughts than yours. Let's go to... First Kings 21. And we're going to be there for a minute. First chapter, King, uh, first King chapter 21. Glory to God. God is showing us a way that we may never have looked at or even thought of before, but it's a way that he knows that we have need of. So first Kings chapter one is talk, uh, chapter 21 is talking about Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And so Ahab, and I'm just setting the stage because we're going to be coming from verse five. And yeah, we're going to go down a little while. Thank you so much. Ahab is this wicked individual that um, he has a wife called Jezebel. And Ahab was so wicked, God says in his word that he, he, he done more evil than his ancestors before him. So Ahab now, there's this young man, Noboth. He has a piece of land that his family died and left for him. Ahab wanted the land, but the young man wouldn't sell him. He, Ahab told him, I will give you money or I will give you another piece of land. Now, first of all, he has a piece of land. Why would he need this land that this young man has? But greed will cause you to do that. So he told him, he said, I can't sell you the land. So after that, Ahab just become like a little child, just began to pout and carry on real bad 
and throw himself on his bed and just boohooing and carrying on. Well, his wife, who is just as wicked as he is, uh, came in and find him laying there. And she's like, what's wrong? And so we're going to go to verse five. And it reads, but Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? He said to her, because I spoke to Nobah, the Jezreelite, and said to him, give me your vineyard for money, or else if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, and we're still talking about faithfulness. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise and eat food and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard that Nobeth, the Jezreelite, Jezreelite. And she wrote letters to Ahab. Now look at the wickedness that she has done getting ready to do. And she wrote letters to Ahab with Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city of Naboth. She wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast. And, oh my God, proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honors amongst the people. The seat two men, Scrondrel before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. So the men of the city, the elders, the nobles who were inhabited in the city, did as Jezebel had sent them, as it was written in the letter which she had sent to them. They proclaim a fast, seated Noboth with high honors amongst the people. The two scoundrel came in and sat before him and the scoundrel witnessed against him, against Noboth in the presence of the people saying, Noboth has blasphemed God and the king. Now these are liars that they, they hired to come and sit there and tell a bold-faced lie that they, that they heard him blaspheme. Does that remind you of somebody else? When they, they blaspheme against Jesus to say that they heard him say, and, and things that he said, they said he, that he didn't do. Well, this is one of those. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stone that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned to death. Amen. So here it is. Faithfulness in this aspect is faithful to wickedness, to hard heartedness. This is the type of faithfulness that they exhibit. Now, we look at this and it was like, I would have never looked at this to see faithfulness, but this man is so wicked that when you plan, when you make a diabolical plan to bring hardship or to do something evil to someone, that is you being faithful about that thing that you set your mind out to do. And that's why the Bible says in the beginning, the heart of man is wicked above all things. So sometimes we find ourselves being faithful over or about the wrong thing. Sometimes somebody may have done something to us, but instead of us either letting it go, if we can do that, which most of the time we can, or we bring that thing to the Lord. But what we do, we devise a plan that will bring harm or even death to the individual. Sometimes we don't do death in term, terms of, using stone or killing the person in the natural, but spiritually we kill them and, and we don't stop until we bring them down. That is faithfulness to wickedness, to wickedness. And sometimes we do that unawares. We're not looking at it as if it's, it's faithfulness, but we're looking because we got to get even. We got to fix. I can't believe he or she didn't do that. I can't believe they said that about me. And then because somebody spoke a word or something that was not nice or something that hit a nerve or make you feel some type of way, we devise a plan to get back at them, to be evil. When God showed me that this morning about faithfulness to evil, I didn't say, oh my God, I just like, wow. And I wrote it down. We have to allow as people of God, things that takes place in our lives, things that people have done to us, we have to allow God to fix that. 
The Bible says no weapon that is formed against us is able to prosper. And it doesn't matter what kind of weapon. It doesn't, it will not prosper. It does not matter. But we have to trust God because that's what faithfulness is. That's what faithfulness does. We have to commit our ways to him. We have to think on the way that he would have us to think on to do how he said for us to do. There are times when uh, a person has done us wrong. Yes. Yes, it's unbelievable the wrong that they have done. But because we are new creatures in Christ, we cannot react the way that we used to. We cannot allow the tradition of men and the tradition that is in our family to cause us to continue on that same path of wickedness. Why? Because we belong to the most high God. We are now new creatures. All things has passed away and behold, all things are new. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So for the thoughts that, that we have that does not line up with the will of God, we have to get to the place that we allow that thing to die and for God to live in us. Verse 20 of the same chapter, chapter 21 says, Ahab said to Elijah, Art thou, hast thou found me, O my enemy? And as he answered, I have found thee. Thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, thank you so much. When we look at, and, and I would, I would uh, uh, ask you guys to read that chapter when, when we're finished today that you can get a real gist of what God is saying. So Elijah is a prophet that always come to, to bring a word, but um, Ahab doesn't want to hear anything from Elijah. Why? Because Elijah come with truth that he doesn't want to hear. And so a lot of time that, you know, some people may get mad at you. It's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because you come to tell truth or because you tell them truth that they don't want to hear. So Ahab says to Elijah, have you found me, O oh my enemy? How did Elijah become his enemy? Why? The Bible says, even Jesus says, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? And so here, um, Ahab is saying the same very word to Elijah by asking, telling him, my enemy. And he answered, you have, I have found you because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And sometimes we forget when we do things wrong. And we don't think that God is seeing or that there's going to be uh, a reward that we're going to reap, whether we think it's going to be a good one or a bad one. There is something that we're going to read. We're going to stay in that same uh, chapter. Here, uh, go to verse 25 for me, please. Verse 25 of chapter 21 of First Kings. And it says, but there are no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord. But Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up and he behaved very admirable in following idol. According to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord has cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fast and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. Keep going. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, see how Ahab has humbled himself before me because he had humbled himself before me. I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Now, when we think we do something wrong and we, and we purposely, faithfully commit ourselves to doing that thing, God is watching. So he sent Elijah to deliver a message and Ahab received the message, even though he didn't want to hear nothing from Elijah because he knew he was wrong. But a Elijah delivered the word. And Ahab repented. He rent his clothes and put ashes. God says, you see how he humbled himself before me? He didn't say, I didn't do it. And I don't know what you're talking about. And I don't, I just don't receive that. No, what he did was he humbled himself and God had mercy on him, not allowing what was supposed to come upon him 
to take place. But he says, for the rest of your generation, they're going to receive it. So let us not do and, and condition ourselves or purposeful in our heart to do things contrary to what God would be pleased with. Because although it might miss us, it's going to catch your generation down the road. And so we want our bloodline, our generation to be free from that kind of wickedness and free from the things that we would do that would not please God, that we, we, we can't take back. Because we are we at that point will be dead and gone. And just our children are left and then their children and their children, children, because these things go from generation to generation. Amen. 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 So plotting how to get even with someone that takes time and thought. We don't want to waste time by, by trying to get even. That takes a lot of effort and a lot of time that we could have been giving God praise, that we could have been reading our word, we could have been praying for somebody else. We don't want to take our time and waste it on those type of things. And so um, we're going to look at the book of Esther, chapter 5, verse 9 through 14. And while Dr. Mildred is, or Dr. Kwame is turning to Esther 5, 9 through 14, I want to tell you what's going on here before we get to those verses that we're going to look at. So Esther uh, is the woman of God that was brought into the king's palace. The king sent out a decree that he wants. He's looking for a new wife because the first wife disrespect him. And now he wants a new one. And I'm just moving along with the story. Again, please read the scripture for yourself. Every time somebody speak a word, don't just look at the verse. Go back and look at the entire chapter so you can understand. Amen. Thank you, man of God or woman of God. So as, as uh, this story continues, Esther have a uncle, Mordecai, that, um, that watches over her and he sits out at the gate of the palace. Um, Haman is a wicked servant the right hand man for the king and he wants as usual the enemy wants to be preeminence he wants to be worshiped he wants to be seen and so what he did was he he began a device a plan to get rid of uh mordecai and what he did was we'll see here he made the plan and the plan backfired but before it backfired um he tried to make uh, a plan where Mordecai would not only either be cast into prison for life or they killed him, but God have another plan. And this plan is going to take place the way that God would have it to be. So again, we are still talking about faithfulness to wickedness. So the word reads, so Haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. And remember, Haman is the wicked one. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and that he did not stand and tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Mordecai restrained himself and went home. And he sent and called for his friend and his, and his wife, Zeresh. Then Haman told them of his great riches the multitude of his children, everything in which the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the officials and servant in the king of the king. So you see Haman wants to be preeminent. He wants to be seen like, you know, I can do better than that. I can, I can preach better than that. I can do the word better than that. I can teach better than that. Whatever the case may be that we, we conjured up in our heart that trickles down you know, in our mind that trickles down to our heart, we want to be careful. And it says, moreover, Haman said, besides Queen Esther, invite no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow, again, invite by her, excuse me, and tomorrow I am again invited by her along with the king. Yet all this avail me nothing. So long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Keep going. Then his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends said to him, let a gala, a gala be made 
50 cubits high and in the morning suggest to the king that Mordecai be hanged on it, then go merrily with the king to a banquet. So a gallow is one of those that you see they do in the Western movie and then it on your neck. So whenever you make a plan for somebody else's demise, make one for yourself, amen? Make one for yourself because I'm telling you, when we do, there's something coming your way, amen? So we're going to continue and we're going to look at Chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. Chapter 6, verse 8 through 13. Verses. And it reads. So Mordecai now presents himself to the king. Remember, he tell him, you know, that he was going to talk to the king about making this, um, this thing happen. So verse 7, let's start. Then Haman answered the king. For the man whom the king delight to honor. Because remember, he wants to be preeminent. Let a royal robe be bought, which the king has worn, and a horse which the king had ridden, which has a royal uh, crest placed on his, its head. Then let the robe and the horse be delivered to the hand of the one that the king, most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him on a horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delight to honor. Now this Mordecai making this plan, thinking that the king was talking about him, the whole while he faithfully, faithfully and, and faithfully, uh, purposefully make this plan to embarrass Mordecai, to cause Mordecai to be killed or to be put in prison for life. Then the king said to Haman, hurry, Take the robe and the horse as you have suggested and do so to Mordecai, the Jew, who sit within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone to all that you have spoken. So you see, while he's making hurry to tell the king, do this and, and O oh, king, let a robe and a horse and let, let us parade that one you want to honor, thinking that he was talking about you. So does the enemy wants to use us to do his bidding. And so God is saying, do not allow this, this kind of thought or this kind of wickedness to come in any way. It doesn't matter what's down your bloodline, what's going on in your family, how somebody has done something really bad in your family. Don't reciprocate by allowing the enemy to use you. And so God vindicates uh, Mordecai by, he vindicate Mordecai by allowing this thing to go forth, not as Amen as planned, but the way that God has planned it, because God have a plan for his people, a plan of good and not of evil. Amen. So we continue with verse 11. So Amen took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square and proclaimed before him, Thou shalt be, thus shall it be done to the man who the king delight to honor. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his house, mourning, and with his head covered, he was crying like a baby after he made his great plan, but it didn't work. Now, Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His wise men and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but surely fall before him. You see the plan that God has? So when we don't allow the enemy to use us for his wicked devices, surely his plan will come to naught. Surely nothing will manifest from what the enemy is doing. But only if you help him in doing what it is that he's, he's trying to lead you into doing. He's trying to use you into getting his plan to manifest. You have to stand your ground. We have to stand our ground. We have to say, not my will, but thy will be done. No matter what it looks like. I don't care if it's on the job, if it's in church, if it's in your home. Sometimes there are things going on and people make us so mad. But even when they do, we have to take a stand. Does what we're about to do or what we're thinking, does that line up with the will of God? Will God be pleased in that thing? 
And whenever we allow the enemy to use us and we carry out his bidding and meditate on it, know that the enemy is standing back after we have done whatever and laugh at us and go to God. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren and he goes to God every day pointing finger at you and I. Look at what she did. Why you don't do so and so about it? And as soon as we repent, God turned that thing around for his good. And he would say, not so. My daughter, my son, I've heard them. I've heard the repentance just like he did with Haman. Amen. But we can commit ourselves to do good. We can commit ourselves no matter what. For God, I live and for God, I die. We know also that Esther, she committed herself to good because there was a nation of people that was depending on her. And she went and called a solemn fast. She called that fast because she's saying, listen, I know that I'm a Jew. And her uncle told her that, don't think that you are there just because you want to be his husband, just because you want to be the queen in the palace. You're there because God have a plan and God has a plan for each and every one of us. And that plan will come to pass when we submit ourselves, when we commit ourselves faithfully to his plans faithfully to do the will of the father and put aside all things that easily besets us. That means put aside anger. That means put aside uh, getting even. That means put aside coming up with things and how to have revenge. Somebody have a need and you're able to fulfill that need, but because you're mad with them, but because they did something to you previously. And sometimes it's so many years ago, but we won't let it go. That's, being, that's committing faithfulness to wickedness. And that's the enemy at work. It's time now that we lay aside those things. It's time that we give God, give over to God everything that's, that's hurting us. Everything that we've been through that is not of God, is not right. And yes, when we're hurt and when somebody hurt us, it's real. But it's more real when we can trust God, when we commit our ways to him and let him fight our battles. The battle is not ours. It belongs to him. And sometimes, we're not, not sometimes, all the time, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're, do, we're not doing it for the person, but we're doing it for ourselves and for God to, to vindicate us. Amen? Amen. So as we look, um, Amen was deceived by his own wickedness. You see, Amen thought that let me let me put this plan together and let me just whisper in the king's ears that this Mordecai and you know he didn't call him and you gotta you know parade this one that grand thing that he planned. But the same devil that caused him to make that deceptive plan deceive him. So when he thought that that plan was going to work and that Mordecai was going to get what he thought Mordecai would get, he was deceived his own self. How many times were we deceived? How many times we thought something and then it turned out to be something else? We were deceived. Let us begin to trust God. Being faithful of the things of God is what we do. Esther chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Esther chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. We're going to see how faithful we are to be concerning something good and, let, and not let the enemy use us in that place. Can we go there, please? Esther 4, 16 and 17. Amen. Chapter 4, verse six, 16 and 17 and it reads go gather all the jews who are present in shushan and fast for me neither eat nor drink for three days three days night or day my maids and i will fast likewise and also i will go to the king which is against the law if i perish i perish so mordecai went his way and did according to all that esther commanded him so esther is saying if I perish, I perish. I'm going to do things the way God would have me to do it. And so it doesn't matter um, the normal way for somebody to go to the king 
If you go without the king calling you, you can die. Esther is saying, I'm just going to do what needs to be done. And I'm going to do it God's way. And if I perish, I perish. But the plan of God is going to go forth. And this is not something easy. Sometimes we have to just let pride take a back seat to what our issues are. And most of the time is pride. Pride does not want you to do what is right. Pride does not want anybody to know what's going on with you. Pride will cripple you just as fear would cripple you. It will cause you to sit and it will cause you not to move. It will cause you to not to make right the wrong that we know that we have done or what we have thought. You know, when a thought come to me and, and, and I know it's not God, immediately I, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast that thought down in Jesus name. I do it all the time. And we know when the thoughts come, we know what thoughts is not of God. And so we ought not to act like we don't know. The Bible tells us in Romans, it's already written in our hearts. So we know the truth. So when the thing come up on us, we ought, to, we ought to take authority over it and do not continue to walk in that path. That is not a good place for us to be because the entire thing is the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You're not talking about nothing else but come to kill, to steal, and destroy us so that God's plan does not take place in the earth. And God wants to work through you and I. Amen. The enemy is afraid of you because God is with you. Only put your trust in him. God, only put your trust in him. God and uh, don't do don't be afraid and don't be moved by what you see. We will find that in 1 Samuel chapter 18, 14. We're not going there, but we're going to turn to Rome, Romans chapter 6, verse 12. And it says, let not sin reign in your mortal body, meaning exercise dominion, but that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Let not sin reign in our mortal bodies. Don't let it exercise dominion over us so that we do not exercise faithfulness on a level or, a, or on a, uh, a level that God is not calling us to or a level that is not right or wickedness. We need not to obey that because this is what the enemy, where he would take us and where he would like us to go. So let us go and let us release unforgiveness. Let it go. Unforgiveness comes into the place where we surrender also to faithfulness of wickedness. Because when we have unforgiveness in our heart, then we're not releasing the person. We're not able to move. And God says, if you cannot forgive those who you can see, your father, which is heaven, will not forgive you as well. So basically, if we don't let go of unforgiveness, you're just going through the motions. Just simply going through the motions. Let go of disobedience. Let's begin to practice obedience and obeying the word of God. Let go of hate. Choose to forgive and do it quickly. Uh, those family members you have spoken to, you haven't spoken to because you were hurt so bad and that they, that situation that you should bring before God and you don't. We need to cry out to the Lord and let him know what is in our heart. He already does, but he needs for us to open up our mouth and, to, and, and speak to him. He said, ask and you will receive. Does he not know what it is that we need? He knows, but he wants us to act the same way. He wants us to tell him what's going on with us. A lot of times deliverance can come easily for us if we just confess, if we just bring it before the Lord and not wait for years and years down the road, then this thing becomes a full grown tree. Now the fruit that's being produced, that is, you look at it and you just unbelievable that this thing comes the way that it does. But if we don't release ourselves to allow God to set us free by committing our ways unto him, by committing ourselves to him, we will see that we will have a full grown tree that sometimes the root goes so deep, it's hard to dig up. And even when we cut down some of the fruit or some of the limbs off the tree, it spring right back up because the root is so deep. 
Let us get to a place that we begin to release ourselves from these things. Let faithfulness overtake us. Be true to ourselves and you'll experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. To God be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I want to look at, I want to look at 2 Samuel, and this is going to be our last area that we're looking at. 2 Samuel chapter 9. Amen. When we're talking about David and Jonathan. David and Jonathan. David is Jesse's son, the, the same David that killed Goliath. Jonathan is Saul, the king's son. The Bible said that they made a covenant with each other. And as they made that covenant, the Bible said that Jonathan loved, loved David with his whole soul. And so as time goes, and I'm just telling you the part of the story, again, read it for yourself. As time goes on, God called David to be king because he's getting ready to put Saul down. However, the devil got into Saul and Saul hated David for no reason. David didn't do anything to him. But because of the anointed that's upon David's life, and sometimes because of the anointing that's on our lives, the enemy desire to take us out. He desire to use us to do his bidding. But when we yield to him is where we, 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 we make the error. So David continually do what is right. He continually to do, even if he have to run from the presence of Saul. And so David and Jonathan made this bond that could not be broken. Although Saul was David's, was, was Jonathan's father, jo Jonathan's heart was knit with David because David was doing right. David was pure and his heart was right towards God and towards man. And so it says, and now David says, is now, before we begin reading, um, Jonathan had a son. His name is Mephibosheth. And that son, he was, when he was small, the nurse was carrying him and as she ran with him, she dropped him and he became crippled. So in the meantime now, and, and, and watch this, in the meantime, Jonathan passed away. So David, because David and Jonathan were so, such good friends, Jonathan was faithful to the relationship. He was faithful to, to, to Jonathan. So now, he wants to bless Jonathan bloodline because Jonathan was so good to him while he was away, while he was with him. And so this is where we're going to read now about the kindness of David towards Jonathan bloodline, not just, not just Jonathan, you know, David being kind to Jonathan, but Jonathan already passed. He's looking for the bloodline. It's the same way that the enemy looked to keep up the foolishness in the bloodline, the wickedness in the bloodline. So you, your generation in the past, you may not know what they have done, but you can see the manifestation of the wickedness sometimes in the bloodline. Now we want to ignore it if we want to, but we can see it, it's there. And even just to be able to speak to the person you can know. So J David now is looking to bless the bloodline of Jonathan. So he said, now David said, is there still anyone is left in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant in the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, are you Ziba? He said, at your service. Then the king said, is there one, excuse me, is there not still someone in the house of Saul, who to whom I may show kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in the feet. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed he is in the house of Mekur. 
the son of Amel in Lodabar. The king, the, then King David sent and bought him out of the house of Makur, the son of Amel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, which is actually the grandson of Saul, because it's Jonathan's child, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrate himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, he answered, here, here is your servant. So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. And I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continuously. Then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant? What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog like I? And the king called Ziba Saul servant and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your son and your servant shall work the land for him and you shall bring the harvest that your master's son as have food to eat. But Mithibosheth, the master's son shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba, the 15th son and 20, 20th servant, amen. So here is it that David searched out. So Saul died, Jonathan died, everybody else is dead. And he wants to know, is there not someone in the bloodline that I can bless? Is there not someone? And God is looking for the same way. He wants to bless us and he wants, you know, he wants to give us and restore to us everything that the enemy has stolen. But he's looking for a heart that is right, a heart that is faithful, a heart that is committed, a heart that is, is has surrendered uh, unforgiveness, a heart that let go of disobedience, a heart that he can pour out the blessings of our forefathers and foremothers and grandparents that serve him faithfully upon us. God is looking to do the same thing. He restored to, to uh, Mephibosheth everything that Jonathan had deserved. God wants to restore to us everything that we deserve that our parents, our grandparents, our great, great, great grandparents have done that he wants to bless us. But Amen. if we continue in this place, that blessing will not come. We will not reap that blessing if we do not surrender our ways, our will, our, our, our. We need to release our and, and let God come into our heart. Let him lead and guide us in the way that we should go. The other thing that I noticed in that very scripture is Jonathan uh, Mephibosheth was living in Lodabar. Lodabar is a place where God is not. There is no anointing. There is no God. There is nothing but death waiting. That's what Lodabar is. So when we don't know who we are, that's where we live in a place of Lodabar. Jonathan doesn't, didn't, uh, Mephibosheth didn't know what he had. He didn't know what uh, belonged to him. He didn't know who he belonged to really. He just thought I'm the only one living. So let me just go on and sit here until I die. We don't want that. God gave us life. We take that communion because the blood of Jesus Christ give us life and life more abundantly. He gave up his life so we will have life. And so we will live for him. Glory to God. So whatever we know, whatever we see in our bloodline, whatever we understand and some things that we know that our family members doing, let us not conform to their ways and let us not do according to what they're doing if it does not line up with the will of God. I know from the country I come from, pride is the reigning demon. Pride is so strong and so thick, you, you, you would need a chainsaw to cut that thing the way it's so thick. But we got to let go of pride. We got to let go of pride. We got to let, we have to divorce pride. We have to let it go. We have to put the blood of Jesus on anything that we know that easily besets us. Anything that's keeping us from walking and moving into the things that God would have us to do. 
So God says, as long as we allow faithfulness to overtake us and be ourselves in his presence, we will experience joy unspeakable and full of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'll turn this over it's back over to Dr. Um, Kwame. And um, after, I would like to pray though, Dr. Kwame, if that's okay. That's okay. Amen. Amen. We're just going to pray. We're going to, you know, nobody has to unmute at this time. You know, we will just search ourselves where we are and allow God to speak to us, even if he had, even while the word was going forth and you resonate with anything that was said. Just let the Lord speak to us right now. And we're just going to commit our ways unto him. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your faithfulness towards us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Help us, Father God, to lay aside everything that easily besets us. Help us, O oh God, to open up our heart that we can be faithful and committed ourselves to you, commit our ways. Father God, no matter what comes up, what circumstances or situation, let us not react the way that we used to. Let us not look back, oh God, and even say, I put my religion down, that we're going to give a person a piece of their mind, our mind or a piece of our heart. Let, let us not do that in the name of Jesus Christ, but let us even walk away, glory to God, and even give a soft answer, he turn it away wrath in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be able to forgive, Father, with everything on the inside of us. Let us put aside disobedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us run to you, O oh God, that we may find help in the time of need. Let us look to you, Father, to help, O oh God, that where our help come from in the name of Jesus. And whatsoever you have started in us, you'll finish it. Father, we realize according to your word, you want to restore to us every blessings that our forefathers who serve you faithfully, who have done according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ is due. And so, Father, we just surrender right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our will, our ways. And so that the blessing of the Lord will overtake us, even as Jonathan, even as David searched out the bloodline of Jonathan to bless them, oh God. So you're searching us out this day to bless us because of our forefathers in the name of Jesus Christ, those that serve you faithfully and with spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So God, we just give you praise. We give you glory and honor as we surrender now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Oh Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jones, for such a powerful word on the faithfulness of man. Beloved, we have heard the word for ourselves. And before she started, she said that when God gives us a word, it's because there is a need. And that is true. I believe that as you have heard this word, you have also visited the place of need and received it for yourself. Amen. She read from Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10, that talks about the heart, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Desperately wicked, some translations say. So who can understand it? But the Lord searches the heart and tests the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Beloved, then she went ahead to tell us about two women and two different types of fasts that they ordained. Je Jezebel stood on a false premise and proclaimed a fast. You know, she was proclaiming a fast deliberately, knowing that she plans to tell lies all the way. 
you ask people to fast so you can tell a lie. Come so on. when you see today that is happening in places and they refer to such people as prophet liars, they did not invent it. They are just students of Jezebel. One woman, one fast. Another woman, Esther, with her own fasting, because of her fasting, you know, salvation was brought to the Israelites. Instead of Haman healing these people, they were saved. Mordecai was raised from the gates to the palace. He too was given honor, was recognized by the king for his good deeds. Two women, two different types of fasts. One, the fast was ordained by the Lord. The other, the fast was ordained by man. So we see that God is faithful. When we follow his way, the blessings are different. If you see how Mordecai ended up based on a faithful fast that was proclaimed. Yes. And you see how Jezebel ended up based on the, the faithfulness of man, the wickedness of man's heart that she used to proclaim a fast. Beloved, I believe that we should be um, touched by this message and we should respond to it as we have received it for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now, she also said that the devil will desire to take you out as when King David was, an, was uh, anointed as king and saw, you know, the spirit, evil spirit came upon Saul and Saul wanted to take him out. So once your anointing in you is activated, the devil will want to take you out. Amen. You know, so beloved, all we can do to stay safe in times like this is to be faithful to God. So she asked us to release the R in our lives. Release all that you do that is thinking all about yourself and what you can do. Release that from your life. And why you want to do that is because you feel that you are so capable of doing it by yourself. You are prideful. So hashtag you divorce pride from your life. Amen. Amen. So that's just a small summary of you know, the areas that I wanted to talk about. And I just leave the floor open for us to say our reaction. What is a takeaway for you in this message? Beloved, let's hear your takeaways. How did this message minister to you? Yes, Erica, go ahead. Now you're thinking about it. Amen. Amen. Any feedback from anybody? All right. <laughs> um, I'm here. Um, well, Pastor Jones, that was an awesome message. So thanks for sharing. The part that really stood out to me was when it talked about generational curses. Um, I think as you know, Christians, it's very important that we are careful on how we live our lives, not just for ourselves, but for our children and their children, because the things that we do, you know, can affect the generation. You know, God might have mercy and forgive us, but we do have consequences when we do sin. And so it's really important that we are careful how to live our lives and to have a generational mindset, not to say, okay, well, I'm only gonna do this because I wanna do it, but how is this gonna affect my children tomorrow? Whether we have them or not, we should have a mindset to think beyond ourselves. And um, just in general, you know, talk about faithfulness, uh, that faithfulness can show up in many different ways in evil or in good. And then um, the actions that we, we, uh, we decide to do can lead to our faithfulness. So even thinking about our relationship with Christ, how do we show that we're faithful to him? Do we put other people ahead of him? Do we spend time with him? Or is he just a last thought? You know, Because when you're faith faithful to somebody or something, you're dedicated to it. When we are faithful to our jobs, we show up on time, we go there because you know they're paying us. <laughs> so do we show the same faithfulness to Christ and how does that commitment look like to him? So that's something I really have to ponder on. So thanks for sharing. Amen. 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 Thanks for sharing that to Sister Malice. 
Because if we also remember that first Kings uh, 21, you know, verse 27 tells us that when Ahab heard what he had done, that this, what he had done was wrong, Ahab repented. You know, Ahab repented, he put on sackcloth, he fasted, and he lay in sackcloth and went about despondently. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. No, that was kind of a restoration for Ahab because he had humbled himself. So doing this now, if Ahab had gone ahead and not be contented with the fact that the Lord has said he, he will not be punished, but his children will be, he could have gone ahead to make sure his own children to repent of this and it will wipe that uh, trend from the generations to come. So Definitely something that we want to pay attention to. Amen. Amen. Any other feedback? Yes, I do have feedback. Thank you so much, Pastor Jones. My, my one takeaway, well, I had two, but the one that really um, uh, um, impacted me today is when you you mentioned, you know, like when, when, when I thought about maybe faithfulness to wickedness, I was saw it as like the outward actions, right? Like physically um, trying to, you know, hurt people and all of that. But I never thought about faithfulness to wickedness, like inwards, right? My thoughts or like cursing people in my head or the list of just putting together that list of how someone really wronged me and how I can meet them halfway, amen? So not not realizing that I don't have to physically, you know, go after someone, but I can be faithful to wickedness, just even inwards. Amen. Um, it was, it was a big aha moment. And, you know, you really brought that to, to my attention because sometimes um, I tend to keep record of how people wrong me so that I'm waiting for them at the turn signal I had. Um, no, quite honestly, I've been plotting, but <laughs> the Lord just arrested me today. I'm, I kid you not, right? He He just brought that to light, and that really, really, really um, touched me. And and I'm grateful that God could catch me before before I have to repent. Amen. So Amen. Thank you. praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Christine, okay. for sharing. Yes. Yes. Our natural disposition, the heart of man that is not surrendered to Christ is desperately wicked. So that's the disposition. So yes, indeed, you'll be conceiving those things in your mind. And if we look at everything like, you know, from the point of view of an artist, when they start painting, they have a finished picture in mind. Amen. So before you act it out, you've already thought it through in mind. Yes. You yes. know, so the, your heart is churning that, your heart is brewing that, your heart is, you know, positioning that, is building up of just waiting for action. So if we say we can do it by ourselves, then we fall prey to implementing those things. But if we surrender to the Lord, trusting in his own faithfulness, then we know that indeed he will help us overcome and we will not have to repent for the acts Amen. that we have done. So thank you so much for sharing. God bless you. Amen. Any other takeaways? Amen. Amen. That was an awesome message. <laughs> Praise God. I know that message had, uh, uh, had to uh, dealt with everybody on the line. <laughs> And even some that ain't on the line, but it's okay. Uh, God's word, God's word will find his way, amen, to because he's faithful. <laughs> he's faithful. But I was thinking about how uh, different things happen in our bloodline. Uh, I know what the Bible says in the Old Testament about the sins of the fathers or, or, or go, goes from generation to generation, from the third and even to the fourth generation. But I'm thankful to God for Galatians 3.13. It says, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And 
that even means generational curses. So we have the ability to stop, uh, like Pastor Jones said, stop the, the madness that's been going on in our bloodlines, uh, whatever kind of wickedness that, that, that may be. Uh, 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 the, spirit of, the spirit of anger, the Bible says be angry, but sin not. So most of us get angry and we sin. Uh, and we're not, sometimes we don't realize that oftentimes when you're operating in pride and you can't see yourself, you have to have somebody to come along and help you to see yourself. <laughs> That's what, because a lot of times when you're operating in pride, you don't look in the mirror and the mirror is the word of God. <clears throat> uh, James, I think James calls the Bible, uh, uh, the mirror. But anyway, uh, I was thinking like, wow. We we can be we can be carrying on from generation to generation the wrong spirit the wrong attitude the the wrong thing in our in our hearts and in our walk of walk in life and not even realize it and, and to the point to where we we've been uh, faithful to it and <laughs> and so once we become faithful to God then I'm I was really, I was thinking about man we can stop a lot of stuff in the tracks from going from to the next generation. So we have the ability to stop the madness uh, uh, from going to the next generation by by obeying God and doing it the way that God said do it. Amen. So I'm Amen. thankful for the for the word. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Jones. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. So um so what Dr. Jones just said now prompted me to, to think because I've been thinking about what um, Pastor Jones preached and it's it's a lot. Every line was significant and it was a takeaway. But hearing Pastor Jones talk now, so I'm not exactly from a from a, a family that my ancestors worshipped God. So I'm fortunate and I'm blessed to be to have received salvation. And therefore I go by Jeremiah 31, 30, that says that God says, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge, you know? So I believe that salvation has come to change my generation starting from my family Amen. and forward. Amen. The things that I do today will speak on behalf of my children and their children's children going forward. And whatever it is that my ancestors did, the madness, like we put it, it's 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 coming to an end because all they did was raise terrible negative altars that are speaking against us that we're fighting today. But we thank God for the blood of Jesus mm, and the weapons that have been made available in Christ for us, and we prevail that way in the name of Jesus. And I thank God for this message today because another thing is a lot of a lot of people, like 90% of the people that I come across are so vindictive. They're like, because this person did this to me, I wait for their turn, you know, all of those things. It's God has to transform our minds in the we do not need to be faithful to wickedness. Like Man. Amen. 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 We can let them show kindness. Because that's what we are called to do as children of God, right? We're not supposed to reciprocate evil for evil. It doesn't speak well. Amen. That's, that's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for the feedback. We can be faithful to the wrong stuff indeed. And that uh, on, uh, faithfulness to the lies can be passed on from generation to generation to the extent that we we'll just know this is this is what it is. This is what has always been. You know, some may be like, well, this family, they took a plot of land from us. You know, that's why my mother organized for them to be killed. So we'll, be we'll take it back. It belongs to us. In the case of Jezebel, you know, mm -hmm. getting this, 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 this bad thing done in the land. So, if those lies are in the families, these are some of the things that we should sit back and just look at so that we will not be ignorant. The devil will play on those things and will keep us in perpetual bondage. And we'll be wondering why our restoration is tiring. It could be tiring because we are faithful, faithful to, to some lies. Amen.
Amen. Any one more feedback before we wrap up here today? Okay. All right. One of, one of the things I want to point out, uh, Dr. Kwame, is that oftentimes when people on the line are not saying anything, don't mean they don't have anything to say. Sometimes the word comes to us so powerful and, and digs deep into our hearts so deeply to the point to where we're stunned by what's being said and we're, we're contemplating what God is saying to us. Right. So it's not to say that they won't, nobody wants to uh, say anything. It's just that a lot of people are going like, man, that's, uh, that's me. <laughs> that, that's happening. I see that happening to me. And, and they may not have a word to say today, but I believe that they have a word to say later. Amen. Amen. So we don't always Amen. look at uh, no comments as, as a lot of people are, uh, are, are thinking about what God is saying to them. Because remember, the, we're, we're uh, being spoken to by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts individually. Everybody gets something different out of the message. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man, it's like there's like there's like so much like so much like being processed at one time. You can't really find the words to reciprocate it, you know, when it's when it's being told to you. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Wow. Powerful message, meeting each and every one of us in our different places. That's what we always pray for. That's what we always pray for. That's what makes for a now word, a word that comes out and it is I am to each and every one of us. It is I am meeting us in the different places where we find ourselves. So we just thank God for this message. I want to encourage each and every one of us to go back you know, when the recording is uploaded, you can go to YouTube and just uh, search for the Outgivers Ministries. You would find the messages and you look for today's message by date and you can listen to it again and maybe share with some friends, take some time, just meditate, ponder over it and get more out of it. Amen. Amen. So at this point, just want to say thank you all for coming. We'll ask uh, Dr. Jones. I was waiting to hear the sound of his voice. <laughs> yes, he can definitely pray for us and close us and bless us out. Yeah. So, Dr. Jones, please. <laughs> All right, that smooth operator. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> glow, glow. <laughs> Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you surely have made. And we bless your holy name, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, and we Lord. thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. The weapons of the enemy that tries to pass on generational curses to us, Lord, for us to perpetuate the mess. We thank you, Lord, that you've empowered us on today, Lord. Hallelujah. To yes. set the captive free in, a, in, in our mm -hmm. own minds and even those that are close and nearby us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, even in yes. our families. And we thank you, Lord, for deliverance through the word yes. in the name of Jesus. We thank you for, for blessing us and rewarding us for us being faithful to your word, faithful to you, Lord, in yes. the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah for your word that has gone forth. Now, Lord, we pray that you will bless the woman of God even the more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you for every person that's on the line on today, Lord, that, yes, that we've got a refreshing word from you, Lord. we got a right now word from you, Lord, and we thank you for that. And we bless your holy name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, Hallelujah. As we go forth from this day, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that you would have your way in our lives as we yield unto you, be faithful unto you and your word in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise because it all belongs to you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Can we share the final Amen. blessings? Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The love of God, God. Fellowship, of fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let's Let's abide, abide with us now and forever. Surely the day of God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless each and every one. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.